Are you a nursing student or nurse in Canada just trying to make sense of all the important Canadian organizations and associations? You've probably heard of a few acronyms like CNA, CNSA, NCLEX RN, or RexPN, and more. It's a lot to remember, I get it, especially because there are so many other acronyms in healthcare. Well, I've got you covered because this series of videos walks you through some of the most common acronyms used to describe important nursing organizations and programs across Canada. Stay locked in. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Jess B and this is LJ. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this channel was created to support nursing and healthcare students just like you. As a nursing professor and educator, I offer tips and expert advice that will help you succeed in school and in your new career. If this is something that you're interested in, show me some love and support. Hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on weekly videos. Back when I was in nursing school, the only acronym that stuck in my head was DNR. Don't ask me why. Uh, just sometimes as a nursing student, you're so focused on those clinical acronyms and memorizing them that you forget about those non-clinical acronyms. I'm talking about those acronyms used outside of the clinical arena that everyone expects you to know. Now, in Canada, there are a few organizations, associations, and programs that are important to be familiar with. Here's a list to start with. CNA. NCLEX RN, RexPN, and CNSA. Today, I'm giving you a brief description of each of these acronyms, so by the end of this video, you're familiar with them, and you may even consider how they could be used in your role as a student and future nurse. The CNA, the Canadian Nurses Association, is the national and global voice of Canadian nursing. They represent the interests of nurses in Canada at the international and global level. Now, this organization represents all 13 jurisdictions, all of them across Canada, and really aims to advocate for the issues that matter to nurses and impact the Canadian healthcare system. Apart from the political and advocacy work, the CNA has a number of certifications, practice tools, and learning resources that both students and nurses can access. Next up is the CNSA. This association is a bilingual and pan-Canadian organization that represents the official voice of nursing students in Canada. Think of this organization as a spokesperson for nursing students in Canada. Pretty cool, huh? The nursing students can actually have a voice. Their primary goal here is to advocate for and represent the interests of nursing students to the government, healthcare organizations, and even to the media. There are plenty of ways to be involved with CNSA. So if you're interested in getting involved in political, ethical, or healthcare issues that affect nurses, and students, go check their website out. Okay, so if you've never heard of the acronym NCLEX RN, then it's only a matter of time before this acronym starts to get your wheels turning. NCLEX stands for the National Council Licensure Examination. And you guessed it, it's a mandatory licensing exam that students must pass in order to become a nurse in Canada. Basically, the NCLEX RN is the last step to becoming a nurse. This exam is used by nursing regulatory bodies to make decisions about licensure or registration. Just because you attend nursing school and you graduate does not automatically make you a nurse. Instead, graduating nursing school simply qualifies you to be a nurse and makes you eligible to write the NCLEX exam. Now, individuals who are applying to be a registered nurse will take the NCLEX RN. And those who are seeking a registered practical nursing license will take the RexPN. There's a whole lot more that you will probably need to know about each of these exams, but I'll just briefly describe some of the main highlights. Let's start with a few important details about the NCLEX RN. Depending on when you watch this video, some of these details may be updated. So the NCLEX is designed to test your knowledge, skills, and abilities essential to the safe and effective practice of nursing at the entry level. That's a big part to remember at the entry level where they're not expecting you to have the knowledge and skills of an ICU nurse or someone who is in advanced practice. They're really assessing entry level competency. 
The next point is it's only offered in an online format. So there's no paper and pencil or oral examination formats. It's all done on the computer or online. The next point is that a computerized adaptive uh, technology or, or test will be used, which can ask anywhere between 75 to 145 questions. And the examination is completed in a maximum of five hours. If you're looking to become a registered practical nurse in Canada, then you will probably be required to write the entry to practice exam called the Regulatory Exam Practical Nurse, otherwise known as RexPN. As of today, in 2022, this exam is required for those applying to become an RPN in Ontario or a licensed practical nurse, or LPN, in British Columbia. Passing the RexPN ensures that nurses who practice have the knowledge, skills, and judgment needed at the beginning of their career, so again, at entry level. The RexPN is designed to assess whether you have the knowledge, skills, and judgment essential for an entry level nurse to safely meet clients within their first year of practice. Again, entry level guys, they're not expecting you to be advanced, it's entry level. The next point, this exam is only offered in an online format, so similar to the NCLEX, there's no paper or pencil or oral examination format. It's also a computerized adaptive test that can ask you anywhere between 90 to 150 questions, and it's completed in a maximum of four hours. Now, as much as there's a lot of hype around both of these exams, there are also a ton of resources and supports that are available to students as you prepare and as you study. In fact, I'd love to hear about your experience about which resources or guides or courses that you use that worked or didn't work. So let me know in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on the JLT channel today. I promise I've got more good content for you like this video over here. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and even share this video with a friend because it's just like that. Hehehe. <laughs>